Welcome everyone. Uh, let's move on to step two of creating a RAG application with LangTNJS. So I'm, I've already opened uh, this step-by-step -step markdown file and I'm going to open step number two. Uh, this is step number one. We had this really simple class. Let me open up step number two and see what changed. So first of all, we have a new uh, packets in, in a new import here. We have the uh, Olama import. If you haven't run npm install, this is the time to run npm install so that uh, npm installs these packets from the uh, Langchain library. Uh, and in this version, uh, we're just adding a new parameter to the constructor. So we are instantiating the class, but this time we're passing an object which has one property called model and we pass in llama3. This string will be uh, will land over here in the constructor uh, parameter. We're destructuring the, uh, the single parameter. We get the model property. So this is llama3 and we pass this to our internal uh, properties. So now our class contains a property called model which in turn contains the value llama3 or whatever uh, model name we, we pass through um, our um, initializer here. Now, this is going to be used, this is our, our preferred like large language model. So you need to have um, uh, llama3 installed through a llama in order for this demo to work. Uh, the way that you do it is you open up your terminal and you run Olama list to see the installed downloaded models. You will see I have quite a few models, including Llama 3. Uh, in your case, if you don't already have Llama 3, you can run this command uh, on your terminal, which is going to download uh, Olama, uh, sorry, Llama 3, and uh, then you will be able to, to move along. I won't run this command because I already have that this downloaded. And uh, let's let's continue. So we instantiate the class, we pass the model, uh, it ends up here, and then we have this helper method part of our class, which is called init. This is where we're going to be um, uh, running a couple, uh, uh, a few steps that are required uh, in order to set up our RAG application. So this is like a helper method that will be running um, a few uh, commands in order to set up uh, the RAG application and then be able to query uh, the LLM and get some information. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't put this code in here in the constructor, uh, at this point, you might be right, we can move this code in here and we don't need an extra function call uh, in here. Uh, the problem is that as we move uh, uh, along, we will require some, to run some asynchronous code inside here. So we're going to be needing a, a sync await, uh, which is something that we cannot use in the constructor. So we will be um, using a sync await with the net helper method, helper method. So this is why we need an extra helper method. Um, once we instantiate the class and we get an object, we immediately invoke the method init. I, I decided to do this in one step. So initialize the class and then chain the init method uh, and, and, and call this method, but you can do it in two steps. You can just initialize the class, store it in a variable, and then call init from that variable. Um, the init function calls this method, this init chat model, which is all about loading the model. So when we call this method, uh, this is going to execute init, init is going to execute this init chat model, which in turn it's going to in, 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 uh, instantiate a new llama class and this is going to create a model object so the this is how we initialize an LLM the type of the model uh, or, or the model that we're initializing is llama3 this was passed to the constructor it ended up into the property model so we're just passing the um, llama3 model in here and we uh, store this model in this LLM class property. After 
in each child model has finished initializing the uh, the model um, then the init function will uh, complete its execution cycle and before finishing up uh, it will return a reference to the class object we need this because after we uh, execute the init, uh, the init function we need to have access we need this variable to hold um, uh, to a reference to our main object so the main class object which contains all these methods and many more to be added uh, will in turn be um, returned and stored into this variable so that's why we need why we need this return this we need to get back a reference to the main object uh, once the init function has been executed uh, at each step i recommend that you run the code to see what's happening we'll get a big object so this is like the this is the model so um, what we get back is as you can see a reference to our object so this is our variable it contains a pdf qa object it contains the property llama3 this is the model that we pass through the constructor and then the lm property contains this big llama object which is a special lang chain object that contains um, all the information about the LLM that we just loaded. The model is LAMA3, we have like the URL that is running and some other information uh, about the model. Now don't worry if this doesn't make too much sense because we're not going to go through these properties or do anything with these properties manually, but uh, you can just uh, watch uh, or study like the, the structure. This is step number two. Uh, basically, we, we instantiated the class and then we um, initialized a, an LLM and we are ready to move on to the next step. So uh, thank you for watching. Leave your comments. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.